Welcome to the Gold Zone. We're visiting with Spartan head basketball coach George Nesman. Uh, season's been over for a couple weeks. I know you're enjoying the NCAA tournament and uh, getting ready for the off season. Your reflection on uh, the, the season, if you would. Well, we we've spent a lot of time in these two weeks doing a lot of review and analysis of our of our team and individual play. A lot of film work. We've had individual meetings with all the players, and we get back on the floor next week, uh, which would be nice. Get into spring workouts. Uh, obviously, recruiting proceeds, and when we look back on the season. We 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 feel like we 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 just left a few on the table that we should have got. And had we done that, I think the things really could have been a lot different for us. And we have to look to the areas where where we can improve that are obvious areas uh, to be better, so that doesn't happen going forward. And um, we need to get everybody just just on the on the same page. Uh, we had a lot of disruptions last year, and we kind of get kind of get that mindset out of our heads. Like that's just something we don't think about. That that we're we're ready to move forward, and and we have to be positive about uh, what we're doing in the future. I know a lot of coaches and teams can say this, but as you review the season, can you show the guys tape to realize that a handful of plays literally could be the difference between maybe 13 wins and. I don't know, 18 or 19. There's no question. That's exactly what it is, Mike. And, and that's what it is for a lot of people and a lot of teams. And, and it's those teams that can se- successfully navigate that are the ones that, are, that got to play in the postseasons, like in our conference, the four or five we did. And then those of us who didn't quite get that done, we didn't. And our guys need to understand that. Uh, yeah, we've assigned them film to watch on their own. And there's a lot of things they're doing to, to better themselves. And um, I, I think you review a season, you reflect back. You pull your lessons and you move forward. You know, you, 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 we, we can't wallow around and, oh, we should have done this. We, we, we were close. We, you know, gosh, and beat ourselves up. We have to learn the lessons and we, we have to be open to those and then we move on from there. You've been vocal about uh, improving starting now for next year. Uh, let me throw some names out and uh, let's begin with uh, a returning player will be Justin Graham. He'll be having surgery. What are some things that Justin will work on between now and next season? Well, the first will be to totally heal up and, and so he can go into the season at 100%, which he wasn't able to do this year. And I think that will be a big difference for him psychologically and also physically because let's not forget that Justin as a freshman shot over 40% from the three-point line. Last year he made two three-pointers in the entire season, um, and that was a direct re- reflection of his injury. Um, so we need to get him healthy. And then he needs to really in earnest get after it and have a big off season. He'll have time. The, the rehab is a couple months. He'll have. A, he should have at least half the summer to, to a full summer. Uh, we want him working. Um, we, we, I'd really like to see Justin hire a, a trainer. We can only work so much with guys in the off season. And there's some number of people we know here in the Bay Area that work players out and some of the top players out. Uh, and and we want to get Justin and a number of our guys involved with that process too. Adrian Oliver, what will he do in the off season? Well, Adrian, another guy's got to heal. And we just told Adrian to take these couple weeks off. Uh, he'll be on the floor Monday. And I think Adrian's just really at a place where he needs to refine uh, more than build. Uh, his game is solid. Uh, he just needs to refine. If you look at his shooting percentages, when he played the few games healthy, when he played not healthy, there's a huge disparity there. And we, we think Adrian just needs to be in great condition and come ready to really deliver next year. And, and we're all confident he will. I'll group the next two big guys, C.J. Webster and Chris Oaks. Um, CJ needs to work on his body and, and do a, a little better job in the weight room in the off season. And, and he just needs to be, see himself more as a force down in the paint. Uh, and I think Chris needs to add weight. Uh, we got Chris from about 205 to about 215 to 220. And you, you lose a few pounds during the year and now you're playing 215. Uh, we'd rather have him see him start next October at about 2.30. You need to morph those, those two bodies, right? <laughs> well, that, that would be something. But, and then Chris needs to get back to what he does best, you know, playing around the basket, making his jump hooks, scoring in close, rebounding the ball. His, his rebounds per minute play was highest in the whack. Um, and, and so people often don't want to work on their weaknesses. So we, we can't ignore our weaknesses. But when you do that, you can't get away from your core strengths either. You've you got to continue to build on your strengths and then address some things that you don't do as well. well. We'll put a real limited number of things at our guys and say, do these three or four things uh, at spring workouts. We'll, we'll have a limited focus, but it'll be a high repetition uh, focus in, in, in getting our guys better. And I think that's how you improve. How about Robert Owens and Mac Peterson? Robert's got to get stronger. Uh, that, that, I think that was one of his biggest limitations. It really hurt him defending screens and, and uh, chasing guys around. Uh, obviously, he's as good a shooter there is in a conference. He, I think he ended up second or third in the conference in three-point shooting. Um, and, and Robert could improve his ball handling a little bit. Mac, Mac needs to grow in terms of his, his total commitment to what we do so that he's ready 
to to utilize his skills. Mac's a really phenomenal shooter, and he hasn't really performed as one. And so his understanding of the system, because Mac may not be as athletic as some of the guys he plays, has to be just complete command. And if we can get Mac there, I think he'll find himself open more often and be able to knock down more shots for us next year. Okay. Now, I didn't mention everyone, but the, some of the players next year that the people will see will be Kyle Thomas, who's now eligible, and three, if not four, freshmen. So I know you've got to be excited with, the, with finally a, a mix of experience and true, true youth. Yeah, there's no doubt. Kyle, Kyle's a guy that we, we think will really help us. Kyle's a 6'8", can play in the post, can score on the perimeter. He's one of our best three-point shooters every day at practice. Um, he, he is someone who was highly regarded coming out of high school who we liked a lot. Just We didn't have a scholarship for him, and, and, and now it just worked out for him to come back here and play for us. Brings a lot of toughness uh, to the table as well. So real anxious to get Kyle into the mode of thinking you're on now. Before you're off, but now you're on and you got to get ready. Can't talk about all of our freshmen, but the three that we signed, uh, we, we certainly hope to sign another one here in April, but the three that we signed we're very excited about. Anthony Dixon had a huge season back in Chicago, made all city in, in Chicago, and that's, that's prestigious. That's not easy to do. Uh, Lynn Moore uh, led his team to the NorCal Finals at St. Mary's Berkeley and had a great year, and Joe Henson had an, uh, an outstanding season for Pasadena High. And I, I think all three of those guys with Kyle – and an additional piece that will be added in April. Those are five pretty good players are bringing to the table. Okay, finally, I know that uh, your your players are basketball fans. I've, I've talked to them a lot. I know that they uh, they live and breathe basketball. Are you, as they watch the postseason, the NCAA, the NIT, all of these tournaments? Do you say now pay attention to these tournaments, guys, because um, this is a, a spot we want to be? There's no doubt we we do that, and and I think for a lot of our guys, it's painful to watch because they really feel that we should have participated in something ourselves, or we at least have the the possibility of doing that and we didn't get that done so i i think that's a motivator for our for our, for our guys that that they want to focus on getting this done and being in the postseason next year obviously everybody's goal is playing the ncaa tournament in the conference but only one team got in this year so that's really hard to attain uh but that that will be our goal going into next year